In today's beginner video, we're talking about the switch statement in Swift. I'm gonna tell you what it is, how to use it with an enum, how to use it without an enum, like with a range of numbers, something you might do in like a matchmaking of a video game. We're gonna talk about how to use compound cases, and we're also gonna talk about the fall through keyword. But real quick, today's video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is an in-person coding and design bootcamp that offers housing at no extra cost for full-time immersive students. Now, if you know my story, I myself am a bootcamp grad. It was part of the process to help launch my iOS developer career, which I'm going on year five now in this wonderful profession. But aside from their iOS development program, Dev Mountain also offers programs in web development, software QA, and UX design. They even have a career services team to help you with job placement and financing options are available. And Dev Mountain loves hearing from my viewers. So if you or someone you know is ready to start this journey into iOS development, be sure to check out the link in the description. All right, back to the video. Here in this first example, I'm gonna show you how to use a switch statement uh, with an enum. For example, we're gonna use this enum here called phone, which as you can see has a couple different phone types. And we're gonna use this enum to get my opinion on each phone using a switch statement. So let's write that function say uh, func get Sean's opinion, and then we're gonna say on phone, and then we're gonna pass in a phone. So this is an important part of uh, the switch statement here called pattern matching. So a switch statement basically matches a pattern that you give it, and then it handles specific cases on that pattern. That'll make a little more sense once I show you how this works. So again, the switch statement, we have to give it a pattern here or a value. So we're gonna pass in the phone here that we're gonna pass in. And remember a phone, takes a phone type, which is enum here. So I'm gonna pass in dot iPhone 11 Pro, dot pixel, uh, et cetera. So the value here is phone, that was what we're passing in. And then let me delete this real quick because that's like the default boilerplate they gave. So I just, if I just typed out switch and phone, Xcode's gonna yell at me. Should yell at me any second now. It's gonna tell me, yep, yeah, there it goes. Switch must be exhaustive. So what that means is a switch statement has to handle every possible case. And that may sound like, well, how, how is that gonna happen? Uh, more on that in a bit. But with our enum that we declared ourselves, uh, we're passing in a phone. And as you can see, a phone only has four options. So what that means is I must handle all four of those cases. Now in the future example, we're gonna use with a range of numbers, right? Numbers can be infinite. So we're not gonna be able to handle all the cases individually. We'll talk about a default case, but that's in the next example. So here I can hit, uh, Xcode will fill in, do you want to add the missing cases? fix and you can see it adds in all the cases for you know my phones the iphone 11 pro iphone se pixel etc but you'll notice this at unknown default so again back to kind of what i was talking about with the default statement basically what what the default does is you tell it the cases it wants to handle and then the default statement handles like everything else right it's like the catch-all and again we'll we'll put that into use uh in the next example but when you define your own enum Right? You already know the cases, the cases are limited. So we don't need this unknown default. However, why Xcode gives it to us is because oftentimes you'll use a switch statement on Swift's own APIs, right? So like I said, this phone enum, we created ourselves. But let's look at this example right here of when you try to get somebody's location, right? You have various different levels of permissions. You can see like authorized when in use, denied, not determined, authorize always. So this is an example of a Swift API that you can have a switch statement on. Now, the reason you get this at unknown default here that we see is because Apple wants to kind of future proof your code because as you know, Swift is constantly evolving and Apple may update this uh, location API to add another case. And instead of your code breaking, you'll default to this at unknown default case and you can handle it however you determine. So back to our code, because we defined our four cases, we don't need that uh, default case. Now, uh, you can see we need to enter some code. So again, what the switch statement does is it handles whatever case, whatever phone I pass in, whether it's the iPhone SE, the Pixel, we have to tell it what to do in that certain situation. So here we're gonna type print for the iPhone 11 Pro. We're gonna say, uh, this is Sean's preferred phone. He loves it. And we're gonna copy and paste this here just to get Xcode to stop yelling at us and to save us some typing. So that's what we want to do when we pass in iPhone 11 Pro. When we pass in the iPhone SE, we can say something like, uh, Sean really dislikes this screen uh, size for his designs. Blah, iPhone SE screen size. Ah. Anyway, Pixel. Uh, what do you think about the Pixel, Sean? Uh, hardware is great. My hands melt when I touch the and droid os though 
dot dot dot. <laughs> uh, Nokia, classic, right? Indestructible, right? You can't break those phones. So again, you're gonna pass in a phone like you see here. Let's do this real quick. So we're gonna get Sean's opinion and I pass in a phone. Let's do the dot iPhone. And then you can see when you use an enum, you get the autocomplete of your four options. You see I'm going up and down here. So let's pass in the uh, you know iPhone SE. And if we run this, you'll see in the console here, Sean really dislikes the screen size for designs, blah. And then you can see, it doesn't matter what I pass in, let's pass in the Nokia and then run it again. And you'll see, now we're gonna print out the Nokia. So again, the switch statement matches whatever you pass into it and it handles the case that you described for it. Now let's talk about compound cases. Cause right, you may not, you may have like a list of, you know, 50 different phones. Well, you can actually compound these here. So I can do iPhone 11 pro comma dot iPhone SE, right? And then we don't need this iPhone SE case anymore. And then our new statement will be, uh, these are both iPhones, but I like the 11 Pro better. So now whether I pass in iPhone 11 Pro, run it, you're gonna see, we get that new thing. Uh, we're gonna get, yep, these are both iPhones, but I like the iPhone 11 better. Uh, or iPhone uh, SE, we're gonna get these same thing. So I'm gonna run it again, but it's not gonna change because well, we're, we're printing out the same thing. So this is called a compound case. So if you have a whole list of phones and two of the cases are the same, you don't have to write out separate cases for them. You can put them on one line like this and make it a compound case. Now let's talk about the fall through keyword. One thing that's different about uh, Swift switch statements is that they return automatically. So in other language, you may have to write uh, return here to tell the, the switch statement, hey, we're done here. Well, Swift's, uh, Swift statements do that implicitly. You don't have to type return or, or break or anything like that to get them to stop the case. Uh, it'll automatically exit the case as you saw, and it won't go into further cases. However, if there's a reason why you want it to go into the next case, you can uh, easily do that with the fall through keyword. So what the fall through keyword is basically saying is, hey, if it's an iPhone 11 Pro or an iPhone SE, Go ahead and print this out like we've been doing, but also fall through into the next case. So it's gonna fall through into the pixel case. So when I run this, we're gonna see you know, this printout and then we'll also see the pixel one printout, but we won't see the Nokia one printout. So let's, let's do this again. We're already passing in the iPhone SE in Sean's opinion. And there you go, we're printing out that and we're also printing out the pixel. Hardware is great, you know, Android, Android joke. Uh, so that is how you use the fall through keyword. Now let's do one more quick example, not using the enum, just using a range of numbers. And this will really drill home the, the pattern matching uh, as well as the default case. So uh, here we're going to create another function, uh, func determine players league, and then it's gonna be from uh, ranking. And then we're gonna pass in an int for the rank here. And then we're gonna do another switch statement and we're gonna do this based on ranking. So now you see switch statement body must have at least one case or a default block. Do you want to add a default case? Sure. We know we're going to have to use the default here, but uh, we'll also do case zero. When the ranking is zero, uh, we want to do print. Please play a game to determine your rank. And then in the default, we'll do break for now. We're going to come back and put in a, a print statement there. But let's create our variable here or let ranking equal zero. And then down here, determine we haven't fully built this out yet uh but i want to get this the baseline started here so if i run this well let's actually uh comment out get sean's opinion so we're not cluttering that up so we run this ranking is zero again we're pattern matching so this is whatever int we pass in using the switch statement we're pattern matching against an int so i need to cover cases for all the ints right right now we only have case zero covered and it says please play a game to determine your rank so in the default case let's say print you're in a league of your own. You're too good. So again, back to how the case works. If it's zero, I'm gonna print this. Any other number, we're printing, uh, you know, the uh, you're in a league of your own, it's too good, right? So how you can use ranges of numbers to create leagues, If again, if we were like uh, matchmaking, again, more cases here. We can do case uh, one, dot, dot, up until 20. So if you're rank, you know, one through 20, let's also create case, uh, 20 dot dot up until 50 and in case 50 up until uh 100 so basically that up until goes to 99 so that's why you start the next case with 100 so 100 up until uh 300 and then we'll go into our default there so what this is telling me is that i need to have at least some code in the case statements right so uh, we'll do print you are in the bronze league and we'll copy and paste this to create our leagues here throughout the rest. 
I don't need a colon there. So, as you're in the Bronze League, you're in the Silver League, you're in the Gold League, you're in the Platinum League, and then Default. So, uh, whoops, I forgot the dot dot there. So, what this uh, switch statement is doing is whatever ranking I pass in, which we're determining up here, it's going to look through that. So, remember when I passed in 221 the first time, it said, oh, you're in a league of your own. Because I didn't handle the 221 case. But now the 221 case should fall here in the 100 to 300, and it should put me in the Platinum League. So, if I run this, hey, you're in the Platinum League. And then if I put this down to, you know, 66, run it, that puts us in the... Uh, gold league again 5100 so you can see how uh, you can also pass in a range of numbers here this is good for like you know scores in a video game or ranking uh, etc and again we're handling every case up until 300 so the default case will handle every other number so even if we put like 500,000 or 5 million whatever that is uh, and run it our default case is always going to catch it right you're in a league of your own you're too good so that's why the default case is important right because again it matches the pattern against an int but like we said there's a, a very large number of integers out there uh, so the default case catches all that's the basics of using a switch statement in Swift. We talked about how to use it with an enum and without an enum. If you like my teaching style, I started creating my own courses. There's the link right up there on the screen. The link will also be in the description. Check that out if you like, and we'll see you in the next video.